the start of our show. Now, our first guest is a broadcasting legend here in New England. He has this documentary you can find online. It's called Boomtown Gold. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Rex Trailer. Welcome, buddy. Howdy, Rex. Howdy, partner. <laughs> How are you? It's so great to have you here. It's you, great to be here. Yeah, well, we, we love giving you to the international TV audience that we have, and we want to tell them your story, because growing up in here in New England, we all knew about Rex Trailer. I want to tell you, my mother used to put me in front of the television, and uh, I'll never forget, every day I heard your voice, and you'd say, I'm Rex Trailer. You were actually doing commercials for Crimson Travel, but it was every day, and I just... When I heard that you were available to come on the show, I was very happy. Let's tell everyone the great news first off. There is legislation right now, and uh, they're trying to make you the cowboy of the Commonwealth. How about it, everybody? And I hope tonight to help push this through. What's this about, Rex? How did this come to be? Well, I found out about it uh, uh, when it was proposed and they told me that they were going to make me the Commonwealth Cowboy. <laughs> and I said, that's great, but what do I do? <laughs> and they said, nothing, because it hasn't gone through legis legislation. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just heard recently that it was approved by the committee. Mm -hmm. Now, if people want to help you out, can they, uh, if they live in Massachusetts, call their legislators and tell them sure. that they want you to be the cowboy of the combo? Come on, there's no other cowboys here. It's you, right, everybody? Yeah. So call your state rep and tell them that you want to see Rex Trailer as the cowboy of the Commonwealth. I have to mention today, I got an email from old friend Tom Bergeron who wanted me to send you really? his best. So he says hello. Uh, and you've affected a lot of people in broadcasting in New England. Some of them have gone on to uh, do some national stuff. And you and I talked on the phone about this. You had mentioned, because I'm Greek Orthodox, that you discovered somebody. Who, tell everyone here, who did you discover? Maria Menounos. <laughs> and I have to tell you how it all started. Uh, I'm a professor at Emerson College. And every year, I take my class somewhere, and I have a group, and, and it's a, mainly a production class. And we went to a big event, and it was a charity event. And we put on a, a red carpet. And so I had my class interviewing the people on the red carpet. Mm -hmm. And there was a beautiful young lady <laughs> standing there off to the side. And I went over and I said, would you like to be interviewed? And she said, sure. And I took her over and introduced her. And she did a wonderful job. Mm -hmm. Well, what happened then was I said, how would you like to be in television? And she said, oh, television, I don't know about that. This was just a short couple of years ago. And I said, well, I'll tell you what, you come to Emerson College, sit in on my class, and we're going to get you in television. <laughs> and so she came to Emerson, then signed up for courses, took my class and several other classes, and she was wonderful. And I said, you're it. You're a hit. And she did great. How about that, everybody? Yeah. Maria yeah. Manero. I went to Emerson College for grad school, and if I knew you were there in the other building, I was taking business classes, I would have come taking your class, and maybe I would have been a hit too, Rex. Well, you are. <laughs> you are. Well, now, I am now because you're here. Oh, okay. <laughs> I wanted to talk to you because you had some co-hosts uh, on your show, and we have a clip 
Uh, this is you and your your uh, your sidekick. partner. Sidekick. Your sidekick, right? I'm saying co-host like it's my show. Your sidekick, uh, Pablo, and uh, and you're doing some push-ups here. This is from uh, the documentary that I saw. So we're gonna roll this clip. Lockus, roll the tape. There we go. All right. I don't know if I can get my feet up on the wall here a little bit. There we go. One. Oh, I'm doing push-ups. Two. Three. Hey. How <laughs> you doing? Fall back, right? How are those for push-ups, Pablo? It's amazing. Do it again. No, push-ups with no hands. <laughs> oh, no! You're doing chin-ups! You were one strong cowboy. I can't believe you did that. No kidding. <laughs> now that I see it played back, it was. <laughs> no, they, they was a trick to that. Mm -hmm. Why don't you tell everyone at home? Because when you see it for the first time, boy, your eyes, you say, oh, he must have done a trick with the cameras. How did you guys come up with that? The camera was on its side. Ah. And so that it appeared that I was doing those chin ups. <laughs> but my chin is still in one place. I, <laughs> I wanted to talk to you because something happened uh, during the course of your show. Um, Pablo, who was your sidekick, actually uh, died of cancer. So you went solo for a while, but you thought it was a good idea to come out and tell the kids, because a lot of kids came to your show. Um, what had happened? It, that's something that's a little bit groundbreaking for its time, because a lot of kids really didn't even talk a lot about death. But this happened for you. Why don't you talk a little bit about that? The management of uh, Channel 4 at the time said, don't say anything. Mm -hmm. I said, don't say anything? about my sidekick dying. Mm -hmm. No, no, kids don't want to know about that. I said, well, it's reality. It's something that happens, and the kids should know about it. And so I did what I thought should be done, and I told the kids that Pablo had died. And by that time, the news was out. Mm -hmm. And I told them that it was sad, and this is something that happens in life and has to be dealt with. And I said, but Pablo told me before he died that he wanted Boomtown to go on mm -hmm. and for kids to have fun. And that's what I told him, and I said, so Boomtown continues. Mm -hmm right after this. How about that, everybody? <laughs> History uh, affected your show as well. Other things happened during this course of 18 years. One of the things uh, was that President Kennedy was assassinated. And when mm -hmm. this happened, you know, you were a cowboy, you had your gun, but you decided this is a kid's show and you stopped using the guns right away. That was your decision. Why did you do that? Well, I thought it was a sad moment in history. Mm -hmm. And guns were all around. People were being killed and shot. And here the President of the United States was shot. And I didn't want to associate myself with guns anymore. Mm -hmm. and. So they went down to the basement in a drawer, and that's where they stayed for years. And I had a lot of kids ask me, where are the guns? And I said, well, I'm not using them anymore. Mm -hmm. However, just recently, uh, I have donated the guns to the State Police Museum. Mm -hmm. and. So we're going to have a ceremony uh, sometime soon. And uh, the guns will be at the State Police Museum. You're, you are my favorite cowboy. He gave up his guns. How about this, everybody? <laughs> and to make the statement and to do it, uh, to make a good example for the kids, Let's talk about some other stuff that happened on the show. It's a little bit more fun. One thing that happened was somebody brought a tiger. 
one day to the show. And the tiger actually did not like uh, one of your friends' shoes. The, the sole was off, and it was going after his foot. Well, the trainer tried to stop the tiger, and the tiger pinned down the trainer. Now, the kids thought this was a show, but this wasn't a show at all. In fact, the camera guys were about to run out the door. When you stood up, went over to the tiger, and grabbed its collar, you pulled it back, and you said, sit. And the tiger did. How about this, everybody? <laughs> so, of course, I've seen the pictures, but is that how it happened, Rex? That's how it happened. <laughs> Actually, all the cameramen and all the people associated with the program were out of the studio. The cameramen were up in the rafters, up in the lighting grid. <laughs> and... I was standing there and I heard, help, get him off me. <laughs> help, get him off me. I was the only one there. <laughs> <laughs> and there were a hundred kids in the studio. Wow. And the tiger and the trainer were under all these kids, surrounded by them. So, at times of stress, you do what has to be done. And, and as a was, real cowboy, you yeah. did do it. Rex Trailer, everybody, how about them? <laughs> so you mentioned that there were 100 kids in the studio because you did two shows every weekend. You brought in 100 kids for each show, and you guys did the math on the documentary uh, Boomtown Gold. It's over 200,000 kids were in your studio over the 18 years. How about that, everybody? <laughs> And that was from uh, 1956 to 1974. Yeah. And uh, here I was, I thought we were great that we had 300 artists come through our studio. You had 200,000 kids come through your studio. <laughs> and all these people, uh, they, they love you. And when you walk around, the people uh, often say hi to you. They say howdy to you. And, uh, and you go to parades and these people come out to see you, don't they? Yeah. It's <laughs> when I do parades, uh, when I do shows, and I'm still doing it. Mm -hmm. Right now, I'm nursing a brand new knee. I'm introducing this on television <laughs> for the first time. It's a knee brand replacement new surgery, knee. right? So you can be ready to do some more rodeos? Is that? Well, there's one problem. The better that knee gets, the worse this one gets. Well, it's time to get the other one done. So I'm going to have to get the other <laughs> one done. <laughs> Now listen, Rex, before we go, uh, I just want to mention that uh, your show touched a lot of people, and uh, you, it was entertainment, it was you singing, but I want to talk about this, uh, this wagon train that you guys had. You, you were an advocate for children with disabilities, yes. and at one point you took all these wagons and you went into Beacon Hill. What was that all about? Well, we had 18 wagons, and we worked out this deal with farmers who had teams of horses, and we built these covered wagons just like, how many people remember wagon train? <laughs> okay. Well, we had these wagons, 18 of them, and we went to Greenfield, the other end of the state, mm -hmm. and we started this. Now, the reason we did it was to promote understanding for people with disabilities. And we always invited them on the show. But this was a nationwide opportunity mm -hmm. to get people to understand about disabled people, whether mentally disabled or physically disabled. Mm -hmm. and, you, and, and you had mentioned to me that you did have a child once that had no hands, and you brought him into the studio, and he was clapping, and some of the people asked you, why did you do that? And, and what did you tell them? I said, that's a human being. That's a person. And that youngster stood there and clapped with the stumps of his arms, and uh, I almost broke down mm -hmm. when I saw that. But those are the people that we want understanding about. Mm -hmm. 
And then the people with disabilities, such as retardation and things like that. Mm -hmm. People have to understand these are human beings. They're part of us. And we have to promote understanding. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are too many people making fun of them. Mm -hmm. And I didn't approve of that. And so we decided to do this wagon train. And it went from Greenfield all the way, way down to Boston. And it was a real wagon train, folks. I was the wagon master. <laughs> I rode all the way. And every evening, we'd stop in a town, pull the wagons in a circle, light a campfire, and I'd put on a show. <laughs> Listen, and you're still putting on the show. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for the real cowboy and hero, Rex Trailer. Thank you so much for coming. It's an honor to have you here, Rex. All right, we'll be right back, right after this.